after this ceremony had been done on me, my brother, I was so sick for several days. Then that traditional Ila told me that I had to stay at his place until such a time that he would see that I had recovered. So this traditional Ila, each and every morning, he would wake up, then he would cook for me porridge in form of herbs, then he would feed me that porridge. It was quite a terrible experience. He said that the reason why I was so sick like this, it was because my ancestor was now living in my body and my ancestor's spirit was so powerful. That is why I had fallen sick because my body was not used to have another entity living inside it because as for now, according to him, it was two beings that were sharing the same body. I got so sick, my brother, and I got so thin within a couple of days that after I had recovered, I then started to gain weight again. That was when that traditional healer told me that I was now free to go to whatever country that I wanted to go and wherever I was going to go, then my ancestor will be the one that will be walking in front of me so that he can help me to get great wealth. I then chose to return back to work in South Africa. When I returned back to South Africa, the first thing that started happening to me from the very first night when I landed in South Africa, I then started to have countless dreams. And in this dream, Brother Nashi, I will be surrounded by a lot of snakes. And these snakes, they were pythons in particular. And in my dreams, sometimes I'll be walking in a thick forest. And as I'll be walking in that thick scary forest then i'll see that there will be no way for me to walk because all over the ground there will be snakes in form of pythons they will be all over the place but they were the dreams of my ancestors that were trying to speak with me this is what that traditional healer had told me he said that if i was going to have such a dream whereby i'll be surrounded by snakes and he said that if i would see a cobra in my dream then it means that something bad was going to happen according to him he said that cobra snakes they are used by people who used bad charms but pythons they are the representation of our ancestors he said that those dreams that i was having the dreams were not bad at all because it meant that whatever rituals that we had done my ancestors had accepted those rituals that that we had done and I was supposed to wait for my own blessing to come. I then got so sick and I returned back home and when I returned back home I was now staying in Gundu because there in Gundu that is where my mother's relatives come from. So after I had gotten sick there in South Africa and when I had stopped working because I was so sick each and every day, my body felt so heavy as if there was someone that was constantly sitting or oppressing on my shoulders. I then chose to return back home because I could not take care of myself anymore. When I returned back home, I was staying with one of my uncles there in Gundu. After that, when I had recovered, that was when he told me that he had this other friend of his who had a company that cleared trucks at the border there in Bait Bridge. I started working at the Bait Bridge border post and there when I was still at the Bait Bridge border post as an agent who cleared trucks, the competition was much better than when I came to the Churundu border post. The clearing agents here in Churundu, they were just too plenty and now I had actually opened my own clearing agent company and it was quite a struggle. I then spoke with one who knew a healer. This healer, I was told that he was in a place that is called Kanumpula in Mozambique. I went there and I was given some lotion to use so as to find more customers and to be feared. When I did these rituals, I was not yet married. I was still single. I was able to have a lot of girlfriends, so I was not in a rush to get married. But eventually, I got to meet up with this other woman who later became my wife. And when I saw that she was okay, I then got married to her. 
But after doing these rituals, I started to see a spirit, this spirit that would suddenly appear to me. The spirit after appearing to me will just disappear again. This woman that I always saw, it was the spirit of a dead woman. And from what she told me, she said that I was not supposed to do whatever that I wanted with the money that was in my pockets or in my wallet. Because according to her, she said that the money was not my money, but it was the money that had been given to me by her. So I was supposed to do whatever she wanted. I had to follow all of her orders. The first time when I saw this terrifying spirit of a mad woman, I was busy reversing my car so that my workers would offload the stock that was in my car. That was when I looked into the rear view mirror and I saw that amongst my workers there was this other woman and she was mad. When I looked at her, she resembled someone who was mentally ill. She was standing with my workers. Even though my own workers never even realized that when they were standing whilst they were waiting for me to reverse the car, amongst them there was another spirit of a dead woman that was also waiting for me to reverse the car. When I finally decided to get married to the woman that I had fallen in love with, so me and my relatives, those ones that had accompanied me to go and pay for the bride price, we were all booked in a guest house. So my uncles, each one of them had their own separate rooms. Then my sisters, they shared a single room and I had my own separate room. I then woke up and I found out the money that I wanted to use for the bride price had gone missing and the ceremony was like the very following day. So I searched for the money everywhere but could not find it. I stressed so much thinking that what am I going to do? I was going to embarrass myself and I was going to embarrass my wife-to-be if I would end up telling her that I don't know where the money had gone to. But there was this other friend of mine. I knew that if I was going to ask money from him, he was going to give me, but he was not going to give me the total amount that I wanted to pay for the lobola to my wife. So I started searching that room that I was sleeping in, and no matter where I searched, I could not find anything. Feeling so stressed, I then went back to sleep, and when I went to sleep, I woke up in a dream state, and I saw that the same spirit of that dead mad woman which was always following me around that mentally ill woman she was standing at the foot of my bed and she was holding two bundles of banknotes she then looked at me and violently she threw those two bundles of money at me and she said you have no right to do what you want with the money that i work so hard for so as to give you i am the one who tells you what to do with the money that i give you she then said that i want you to use this money to marry your wife and that was what i did because i had no choice i was so scared of everything that i had seen that woman doing in that room that i was booked in after getting married something strange happened my wife's womb fell to the ground i don't even know how to explain this to you but a womb fell off from her private parts. After her womb had fallen off from her private parts, even though I rushed her to the private hospital, and then she became fine again, but from the look of things, her relatives started forcing me to go and consult so that we can know what exactly happened, what caused my wife's uterus to fall down from her private parts. It is not a thing that is very common that a woman's womb can fall off just randomly from from her private part but ever since her father my father-in-law told me that it was my responsibility to go around so that i can consult and know what exactly happened to my wife but i have been dodging my father-in-law because i know that if I go and if I consult and if you will be present, then you will know that I am a ritualist and I cannot afford for my father-in-law to know that his son-in-law is a ritualist because of the things that I was told. I was told that if it happens that if I go and consult and if I bring 
any of my relatives and if I will be exposed that I am a ritualist during that consultation, immediately I will start running mad and my brother to be mentally ill is the last thing on my mind right now. That is why I keep on dodging my in-laws. And at that time when the ceremony was being done, that one to pay the lobola for my wife, there was a strange thing that kept on happening to me because as other people were busy doing whatever they were doing when we were gathered, I started to hear voices in my ears as if that mentally ill woman that always follows me around was screaming into my ears. All of these things, my brother, I remained quiet as if nothing was happening, but deep down I was suffering because that woman kept on laughing at me throughout the day. Dear listeners, right there was a message that I received from one of our listeners. After he had given me his confession, then we spoke on WhatsApp. Strange things do happen in this world.